Yeah. So let me get this. Something on the internet sparked or piqued my interest today because it's something that we talked about quite a bit last season, but we've not talked about really this off season. And I think it's it's an important aspect of what what the Kings are going to look like moving forward. And this is from a uh, Professor Oak on Twitter, O underscore A underscore Con. Said by age 28, Al Horford played eight seasons and only shot 65 total threes at 32%. His next six seasons, he shot 1,300 threes at 36%, becoming one of the best stretch fives in NBA history. Mm. Demonis Sabonis is 28. He shot 173s last two years at 38%. It's time to become a stretch five. And I think that is so intriguing. A, because of the Al Horford comparison. I think there's probably a little bit of a comparison to draw with Chris Bosh too, but Chris Bosh was more like a mid-range guy who stepped out and made his longer shots work three instead of two. Yeah, yeah. He was a a mid-range baseline 2018-foot right. yep. jumper. And they said, hey, take two steps backwards, and that is now worth three points. Yes. And he went, great. So so I think I think the more apt comparison is definitely Al Horford. And I think this is an important an important thing is we talk about the Kings off season because we talk about what they need and we know everybody knows what they need. They need height. They need athleticism. They need length on the perimeter. Uh, ideally somebody who can play a, a big, who can play alongside Sabonis. And I think that that's where Sabonis becoming more of a quote unquote stretch five becomes important because a, I think it's a, I think it's a skill set that's underutilized in his bag right now. Yeah. I, I, I I think he is a skilled enough basketball player that if he, if they said, Hey, within the, within the context of the offense, cause I think that's key. He's not a player who's going to take it upon himself to go, Hey, I'm just going to start launching five threes a game. So I think if within the context of the offense, they said, Hey, Domas take four to five threes a game. Mm-hmm. Just when you're doing the dribble handoff and you're standing out there at the top of the key and no one's around you blaze away. Like let it fly. I think that dramatically, not only dramatically improves the Kings offense, because I think there's a legitimate chance that he could hit those at 35, 36%, where he is a credible threat that teams have to defend it. But B, it changes the calculus of what they need or can put next to him in the front court. Hmm. Um, If that makes sense. Yeah. Did your computer just restart? Yeah, my computer just had a fatal error. Oh, boy. So... That's not good. Hopefully, I'll be back. And we like got fro, seconds. dude. We've got frozen ham in the studio. In studio. Okay. Well, I hope everybody's hearing you. I think they are. Uh, it, yeah, they might not hear me on the stream. Um, through okay. this mic, but but we're on the we're uh, on the radio. Though, yeah, so. I'm almost back. All right, so let me see if uh, let me see if this works and get you out of there. Hey, it's just me. And, and, uh, there we go. Hey, and we're back. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, Demonis Sabonis shooting threes helps the Kings offense by expanding his game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And B, helps their their line of construction by changing the type of player that you can add in the front court. Uh, I totally agree. Okay, so, like, I, I think I, I'm going to get a little bit technical with with why it is that I think the Kings need to add a player, but what they do is different than most teams. So, okay. Most teams. So let's just let's just go back to the Indiana Pacers with Demonis Sabonis and Miles uh, Turner. Miles Turner. Yeah. Miles Turner is what you call a, a a rim runner, right? Although he has developed as a player and and he can do both. He can also act as a rim runner, and then he can also sit on the the perimeter as a as sort of the the chaser from mm-hmm. the top and and basically set everything up. The Kings, as opposed to having a natural guy running at the rim, and what that does is when you have a guy who, once somebody grabs a rebound, you have a big who sprints to the other end of the the court. It pulls the defense to the middle because you have to stop the guy who's running right? just in case he gets the ball and dunks. The Kings don't do as much of the rim running as they, they send guys to the corners. Right. That's where they they send two wings straight to the corners who set up and, and get ready to shoot threes. And it's partially because Sabonis not only gets the rebound, but a lot of times he just goes and leads a break, mm-hmm. right? And so there isn't a natural trailer is where I would go with this. And there's also not a natural rim runner. 
So there's not someone collapsing the middle of the defense. Sure. When Sabonis brings the ball up, which is mm -hmm. a little different. And so I think it's it's part of the structure of their offense. I just lost my my uh computer again. That's um fine. yeah, but uh I, I do think that like there needs to be an adjustment there. If he's going to play with another big, mm -hmm. you do need do need that big to race to the middle. And that means that the other players have to understand what it is that their job is like while you have that that style of player on the court. Yes. So if you're not going to have somebody doing that, you know, all the time, then it's going to cause problems. You know, it, so I, I just think it's, I don't know. It's a difficult thing for like Sabonis should get a ton of open threes and he does. Yeah, he just doesn't take them. No, he doesn't. And and I think part of it is because he's always trying to set up the offense from that point at the top of the key. Mm -hmm. But when they all back off, he needs to just go. He needs to just yeah. go ahead and attack and do what it is that he needs to do. And yeah, I, I well, think just it's... and look, here's here's what it does for for me because teams just leave him alone up there. Mm -hmm. He goes up, he does a dribble handoff. Okay, it's not there, it's not there, and then he turns around. And he's facing just I, it, to me. He just needs to to pull that shot. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not asking him to turn into to Steph Curry. I'm not asking him to shoot it ten or eleven times a game from from three. But you brought up Miles Turner. Miles Turner career high in three point attempts for a for a season or three point attempts per game is four point four, and he shoots it for his career at thirty five point four percent. I think Tomas is more than capable of doing that. And it just changes the way that teams defend because, okay, now Domas is standing out there. Okay, now you got a big running at Domas who has enough in his bag to put that ball on the deck. And now he's in the paint and now he's got spray threes as people are collapsing. Like there's just so many things that that opens up for their offense. And it opens up for Domas because now if that big, instead of, instead of collapsing towards the middle and instead of playing in front of the rim, is now standing up near the free throw line or beyond. That's just creating more lanes for for people to cut and for Domas to pass if he doesn't want to shoot it or if there's there's uh, if there's a good closeout. I, I just there's there's something missing to me from from Sacramento's offense. It's like keeping it from really hitting that this peak, and that that to me is it. And it's it's not hey he needs to become a better shooter. It's like no, he just needs more volume. I, and I, I also I think we're always going to have this problem that that Sabonis is a very unselfish player and that yeah. most of what he's doing is trying to be a good teammate, trying to be the guy who does set up other players, who who does do the right thing at all times. And so I, I think that that's part of the problem. It It's not just that, you know, that he doesn't want to do it. It's that he struggles with that portion of his brain that says hey man you've got to go become this player and so for him i think there is a point where he could take five threes a game sure and the kings would probably be better for it but that's and that right there is why i think you can you can tap into that part of him that's like hey i want to i want to be a good team i don't want to run the best offense and that to me is like yo this is it then if you want to do that if you want to maximize what your team is doing shoot that yeah. Not every single time. Again, not not any time you have a modicum of space hoist a three. But how many times did we did did, did we see this year? It, it was multiple times a game where he would stand there and he would even start to shoot. Like you'd see him like bend his knees mm. and start to bring the ball up and then yeah. stop. And it's like, bro, the, I I think they need to create that structure of the offense where they say, look, if defender A does X and defender B does Y then you're pulling that shot. That is the offense now. And if they do it for, for 40 games and he's shooting four and a half threes a game and he's doing it 31%, okay, then let's maybe pull the plug on it. But there's there, there are so many things that that could open up for him, not, not only on, on offense, but as a shooter. But um, I think, like I said, I think that would create more space in the middle. It would change the way teams can can, can defend the Kings where... Okay, you got somebody sprinting out on Sabonis. Great. Ball is on the deck. He's in the paint. And now you've got De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray and Keon Ellis and Harrison Barnes or Kevin Herter or whoever, where somebody's going to be open for three. And that's where you can really take advantage of, of Sabonis' passing out of the paint. And that's created by 
taking the the three or four open threes you're going to get a game. Yeah. I, I do think the the guy that we should look at is probably Jokic. And Jokic mm-hmm. shoots uh like 2.9 threes per game. His high is 3.9 a couple of years ago. Yeah. First career, he's at 3.9 and he's a 35% shooter from 3. I think that that's probably where Sabonis needs to live. He needs mm-hmm. to go from 1.1 or whatever it is to like 3. Yep. And and it's tough because I also think that like to segue to the other guy, um, the way that I think De'Aaron Fox gets better is by taking away one or two of the threes he's taking. I would agree. And replacing those with either like takes to the basket or mid-range jump shots. Mm -hmm. And I know like people think, oh, why would you want him to shoot mid-range? And that's because he's really, really good in the mid-range. Yeah, mid-range is only a bad shot if you can't make it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the misnomer with with the mid-range shot right now. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're going to cash a 17 foot jumper at 64%, then get to your 17 foot jumper and take it. Has anyone ever complained that Kevin Durant or Steph Curry shoots a lot from the mid range? No. Anybody ever complain that Chris Paul shoots too much from the mid range? No. No. And I think that's De'Aaron's spot is man, when he pulls up from 15, I'm like, that's a bucket mm-hmm. every time. So I'm I, I'm with you, man. It, it, I I I went into last year saying I wanted to see him shoot it more from beyond the arc, or get better from beyond the arc, and he did. But it felt like there was no, there wasn't like a balance yet, where I feel that too, and and I I do think that that's how Fox improves. Like he finds a better balance. He's super close to what, yeah, what he wants to be and what he should be, in in you know, as a player, Mm -hmm. but he needs to take this one more step, not just to become more consistent with what he's doing Mm -hmm. because some nights he's shooting 12 threes a game and other nights he's shooting four. Yes. And it's, it's kind of all over the board still. There's going to become as, as he continues to improve and as, and even at his age at 26, he is continuing to improve as that's going on. I I think that there's a moment here where he can take like one more huge leap and it doesn't mean he's going to average 30 a game. But what it could mean is that he's just way more efficient at what he's already doing. So I'm intrigued because I, I think that the the personal growth of the Kings is as important as anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, with Fox, it's funny you mentioned four one game and then 12 another game because he was literally at 7.8 a game, about eight threes a game. But eight threes a game on 37%, like you'll take that. That is, that, uh, yes, that is that good is, efficiency. Oh my God. That is good efficiency. You got to mute first. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is good efficiency on, on uh, a good number of attempts. But to your point, it was, hey, some nights he's, he's seven of 12, and then the next night he's one for nine, and then the next night he's 0 for two. And I think once he finds that that happy medium of um, of getting to eight a game, but just kind of consistently shooting eight a game and replacing some of those random 12 or 13 attempt nights with a couple more mid-range, maybe you're driving, getting a paint touch where you're spraying it out for, for a three with, with you know, pick a player. Um, I think that's where you're getting a maximized version of De'Aaron Fox because we saw it this year. There were nights he had that stretch through the middle of the season where he wasn't scoring a ton. Like he just looked kind of in a, in a kind of a general malaise. Oh, your mic is not on. There we go. Yeah. He was in a funk. Yeah. And we saw him turn into more of a distributor and it's like, great. You saw kind of the pieces of what maximized De'Aaron Fox looks like last Mm -hmm. year. And I think there's a way he can put all those together where, He's hitting 37% of his threes and shooting eight of them a game, but he's averaging 28, 29 points, maybe 30. He's dishing out assists where, hey, now he's not a fringe all-NBA guy. Like, no, hey, he's an all-NBA guy because who are you replacing him with? Yeah. And I, I think... He's I, so I, it, close. It with this, oh, it's, so, it's, right, it's right there, dude. He is so close. It's right there. Yeah. And I think it, I think it starts with that shot selection and just being more... Because it's not... It's the first, Last year was the first time where he's really been his previous career. So he shot 37% from three last year. His previous career high was 30. He was at 37.1%, but on three attempts a game in 2018, 19 after that 29, two 32 to 29, seven, 32, four. 
Mm-hmm. So last year was the was the first time it's been like, yeah, hey, he's knocking these down, so he should keep taking them. It's really crazy too to see a guy jump from five three attempts per game to almost eight. It felt like he took ten more threes again. Yeah. It was such a stark contrast. Well, and the crazy thing is when he's hot, he's hot. And when he's not, mm-hmm. it gets a little dicey. And those are a lot of the games where he shoots a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, that that's where he needs to to recognize when the shot's not falling and when it's time to attack the rim and not to settle for what they're giving you. Because it, it feels like a lot of times he did settle. like. Mm-hmm. There are times where he's just in a flow and he's hitting every single three sure. throws up. Yeah, yeah. There are other times where it's like, hey man, you gotta stop. Like the the Kings start the game and they go, they start with 10 three point attempts. Mm-hmm. Like there was a game where they started a game like 0 for 10 from the field and it was like 0 for 9 from from three. Yeah. Somebody's got to get to the rim. And I and I think for him too, it's just kind of like you now have all of these tools that you can that you can use at your disposal Mm -hmm. now you need to pick and choose when it is time to use this tool versus this tool and and like it's not always the same thing every single time down the court and so i'm excited to see what the next like version of him is and i also think it's really interesting to watch a player from like 19 years old and 163 pounds Mm -hmm. to you know 26 years old married uh, ba- a second baby on the way yeah. and, and like like all like watching the maturation of De'Aaron Fox because I think we become hypercritical because we've seen so much of it sure and it's like okay look I, I want more of this I want less of this and it's like mm-hmm. it's really if we were just to like see De'Aaron Fox for the first time and he came out on the court last year and he's averaging 26.6 points per game mm-hmm. and he's and he's shooting you know 37 percent from three and yeah eight attempts per game it would have been like oh well, this this is an incredible player. Yeah. But because we've watched the progression along the way, it's like he's almost a different player every other year. Sure. Right? And and it's as But I think largely in a good way. No, I think so too. Yeah. And it's as he's tinkering and developing and growing as a player, you know, the improvements there are incredible, especially from mm-hmm. behind the arc. And for that matter, like Domos worked a ton on his three point shot last offseason. He worked with Doug Christie all summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure he's doing the same exact thing right now. We've even seen him at uh, what was it at the the big concert um, down that you have the hat bottle rock bottle rock with Kevin Herter. So like those guys working together, that's a good thing mm-hmm. because one of those guys is is considered an elite three point shooter, has been throughout his career, whether sure. it went sideways a little bit last year or not. But the other one could use some of the just the basic tips. Yeah. Of of like, look, this is how I free myself up to get a little more space. Or yep. this is so it is good for those guys to be working together if they are ag- actually working together, not sure. just hitting the concert scene together. <laughs> um, but uh yeah. but work out together? No, nah, just bottle rock. Just bottle rock. Didn't see him again. Yeah, didn't really see him. <laughs> no, but I, I think that this is a natural progression of your two stars, and then your third player, of course, is Keegan. Let me let me before we get to Keegan, I want to say one more one more thing yeah. about De'Aaron. I don't know if the numbers back this up. But I think the the key change with the three point shooting, it felt like there were too many times, just to get specific here, where he was working for like a pull up three, and it, again, this might just be anecdotal, and the numbers may not back this up, but it felt like transition threes and catch and shoot, he was just cash, and it was the time when he got in trouble is when he'd start dribbling on the perimeter and then just pulling up for three instead of getting by a defender because there's not that many dudes that are moving their feet and staying in front of the Aaron Fox. Yeah. And when he really, that's that's what I would like to see change this year for him. But Keegan Murray. Yeah, I think we're we're seeing all of the same things with Keegan where it's like, mm-hmm. hey, you need to not only shoot more, you need to, like, his his shooting numbers were way down last year. Yeah. Um, like, whatever it was that happened to him early in the season that kind of threw him off kilter, um, it, it was really, really obvious that something was different and just the confidence level and the way he shot his shots so I would like to see him get back to more of what he was doing as a rookie, but not just, I mean, I get that you don't want him to just be a set shooter, mm-hmm. but, uh, but again, it, it, we have to see the growth from him is to be more assertive to, that's it, man. to not question himself or, or what's happening. Just go 
And that, when we saw it, he was incredible. That's a, I don't even have a skill set critique for for Keegan because I, I just do more. We've we've seen the the mid range, a little post game. We know he can shoot it from beyond the arc. He's had a l- little bit of a down year last year. I'm guessing that his career number probably lands somewhere in between his first two seasons. But it's just it's it's we talked about the consistency with Fox of of getting to eight threes a game, but just kind of within the flow of the game instead of. 12 one night for another night and just being up and down in that way. And with Keegan, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see the the same. I'd like to see upwards of, of 20 a night, but just consistently a hey, pencil in Keegan for 16 to 21. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every, every now and then he's going to get really hot and he's going to go more than that. But it's the nights where uh, what I would like to see stop is hey Keegan, 12 points in the first quarter. He went three for four from three. Keegan, after the game, let's see. All right, let's see. He finished uh, four for six from three, and he had 15 points. Yeah. What, I, I, just It's staying assertive. It's staying aggressive and understanding that right now, as this team is is constructed, with, that, with Malik Monk, he's got to be their third guy on offense. Without Malik Monk, he's got to be the second guy. Oh, yeah. Barring you know other dramatic changes to the roster. So that's what I would like to see from, from Keegan. It's, it's literally just that. Because... Okay, I I don't know how much of his handle he needs to work on. I don't know if he needs to work on a, a floater or a, a mid range game or whatever it is because I just I I need to see more more consistently. No, totally. And and I think if you look at his numbers throughout all of last year, he was so inconsistent shooting, and it made life really difficult for the rest of the team. You know, like three games in October, he shot thirty four point five percent from three, but in November. And a ten month, a ten game month, mm-hmm. he shot twenty six percent from three. Oof. He backs that up in December with forty four percent, and then thirty nine percent, and then he falls off the table again thirty three point nine, thirty four point three, and thirty four point two. Like he really finished a strong uh, the, the season on a a really big sort of down note as as mm-hmm. like we got deeper and deeper into the the end of the season. Like his three point shot never came around. Yeah, and, and you know, like he's he's a much better shooter than a thirty four percent shooter, definitely. And he needs to figure that out and and kind of get to a point where, you know, at least it's smoothed out a little bit. And and that's what we saw in his rookie season. So I think that that's more of who he is. Yep. But I feel like he needs to really understand like this off season, like he did last off season, that you know you got to change your body and all that. Mm-hmm. I think he wore out. I think that they're between playing both sides of the ball. And and being asked to defend point guards at some point mm-hmm. and power forwards at other and like whoever the best player is, you're going to go defend him. Mm-hmm. I think there was a point where you saw his body sort of fighting him a little bit. Like, look, mm. we lost all this weight and we we changed to our our body style during the off season, but then your body's always going to want to kind of morph back into who it was. Mm-hmm. And his body was fighting him. It looked like throughout the season. And I think that we'll see a much more improved. His second season is exactly what a second season is supposed to look like in the NBA, mm-hmm. except for not, you don't normally go from being like an average defender to a plus plus defender. Sure. Like, but the rest of it, like there are struggles. Your numbers look bigger, but your numbers realistically don't look as good if you, if you stare yeah. them long enough. And then your third season is who he should be. His yeah. fourth season that's who who we should expect for the next five sure. seasons. And so you're hoping he gets there. But again, the assertive piece is going to be so, yeah. so crucial for him. Scooter916 in the chatty house said that there's already videos on X of Keegan Murray working out. Uh, I, this is not a shot at Scooter. I, I, don't, I am not moved by off-season workout videos. You know, how many videos you know how many videos I've seen of, of Jonathan Kaminga shooting threes? You know how many off seasons I've had to watch Jonathan Kaminga standing in the corner, blazing away from three and cashing every single one of them. Oh yeah, only to not do it in the regular season. I gotta, I gotta see it in the regular season. Off season yeah. workout videos don't move me.